appetite for horror. The chickens come back from the dead! They are very slowly approaching the entrance. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Appetite for Horror, episode number eight. And me and my guests, we got to such a wonderful conversation prior to recording, which is, they say, don't do that in radio. They say, save it for radio. Here's the thing I didn't ask you, Jason. It's yakking in, right? No. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I could say, let's okay. do it. That's okay. Every, everybody mispronounces it. Everybody mispronounces it. Um, it's your Shannon. You're Shannon. Yeah, you're Shannon. Yeah. Well, um, I, but I it would... looks like Yakinin. Yeah, you're right. It does. Uh, I can't tell you why it's you, Shannon. Um, I'm half Czechoslovakian, half Italian. Ooh. So this is obviously the Czechoslovakian name, last name. And um, that, that's just how I've always pronounced it, how I was told it was pronounced. And so that's how I pronounce it. You know, but it does look like Yak. Yakinin. Yeah. Um, someone told me in my family once that um, it was just Shannon. Like the there was a J instead of a Y. And then when okay. someone came over here, they got rid of the J and put the Y in front of it. Again, I don't know if that's true or why they did that. But someone told me that once. So it could have been my name could have been Jason just Shannon. That would have been really <laughs> complicated to say <laughs> so it's jason yes yeah, shannon but i think my favorite i think my favorite mispronunciation i ever got was yakanini that 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 was a good one <laughs> yakanini <laughs> well jason yes yeah, shannon there you welcome, go welcome there it to is. appetite for horror a few things there that's why i just go by brando other than brandon weisler you know weisler you know uh, why you go by brando yeah, it sounds – this goes back to my college days, college radio days. I didn't want to be Brandon Weisler, Jewish kid from Long Island, you know, doing rock and roll. I wanted to sound cool. So then it was – I didn't come up with this. A random friend did. Brando the Commando. Ooh. I went with Ooh, it. I like it. That stayed in college, though. It's that – I don't know. I kind of outgrew that. Brando, are you are you Commando? Are you going Commando? I don't know. It makes me think of Rambo. Anyway. So now are you just Brando? Just Brando? Just Brando. Uh, just Brando. And I'll tell you, and this is maybe you get this too with uh, Yashannon, that girls like calling me Brando because Yashannon, see, I'm screwing up. I mean, I'm getting the, what it could have been. That's stuck in my head. <laughs> Yashannon. Uh, that sounds like a sexy name, Jason. You think so? Yashannon. Yeah. Ooh, like, ooh. Like, like Vidal Sassoon or something. I, I don't think everyone has ever described it as sexy. <laughs> All right. Well, I know you get the typical, which I, I feel I identify with the, the nerdy geeky roles. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I guess you get those. I get, you know, if you look at me with the glasses, that's the way I've been my, my entire life, but just name wise. And I also like your mustache thing going on. You yeah. Some that's good... something new. I'm trying. Uh, my wife doesn't like it. Um, and the Mohawk I'm digging it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank, I, I like the mustache. I think it's kind of cool. It took me long enough to grow the goddamn thing. I mean, <laughs> I don't think I even started growing facial hair until I was like 30 something. So <laughs> now that now that I can do it, I don't want to get rid of it. Uh, oh, that's funny. But uh, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, you don't know this about me, but you might find this kind of interesting or maybe not. Um, <laughs> I, I in college, I, I was on my college radio station as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and my, my on-air name was Scooter. Scooter. See, Scooter. okay. Uh, because I'm not wearing my glasses. Okay. And in college, I couldn't grow facial hair and everyone thought I looked like Scooter from the Muppet show. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so that's how I got that nickname. Oh God. Um, and so that's oh, what I was a uh, Scooter on uh, the sting 88.3, oh, which great. was, uh, which was uh, our, our radio station. But, um, yeah, I, I keep I keep uh, threatening my wife that you see how it kind of has like the handle. Can you see me? Yeah, it kind of yep. has. The, yeah. I keep telling her I'm gonna go like no handlebars, so it's just like shh. And she's like, <laughs> oh, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. But I like the way this is going. My wife, uh, she I made her cry the last time I shaved off my beard, which she I didn't even recognize you. That was kind of it. She's like, this is not who I agreed to go on a date with. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a full finger. See, I can't grow it in fully like you. I can do this and this, but 
everything else I call them my rat hairs because they just kind of like come out like rat whiskers. I can't seem to fill it in and connect it. I love so, the way this conversation has started. This yeah, is so great. Yeah. Not that this <laughs> has anything to do with horror, but uh, but uh, yeah. So that's kind of why I'm it? like, all right. Well, maybe it does. But so I'm like, all right. So well, whatever. If I can't grow a full beard, this still looks like I'm. You know, I'm. I meant to do this. This is how I want it to look. And I could grow a full beard if I wanted to, but I just don't want to. So oh, I'm doing enough. this. Yeah. Uh huh. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, because you never know. Because with actors, you grow facial hair and you change your hairstyle and look and gain weight, lose weight for roles. So you never know if this was for an upcoming role. Even though I, I know you're wearing the author hat now, which we'll get to. Okay. Yep. Yep. But no, I, I, I. But at the end of the day, listen to what your wife says. You know, happy wife, happy life. That's just the don't, way it goes. Don't get rid of. Don't get rid of the little handlebars here many horror movies i've seen where the wife has killed the husband don't you know i've just seen i've seen this story before maybe not i don't know about that but anyway well, you know uh yeah. with auditions and stuff like that they, i mean they will ask you you know are you willing to cut your facial hair are you willing to cut your hair are you really are you willing to xyz so i mean i you know depending on if someone wanted me to lose the mustache i mean i would if it was you know for a role but for now, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep yeah. it. I'm going to keep rocking it. And it's starting to get a little gray too. So now it's starting to get a little salt and peppery. I don't know if you can see. I do. Not, but it's starting to get a little salt and peppery now that I over 40, which I actually like. I actually like telling people that I'm over 40. I know some are like, oh my God, I'm 40. I can't believe. I think it sounds very distinguished. Like I'm 40. I'll I, made tell you, I made it this far. I'm going to tell you in September because that's when I turned 40 myself. That's when you 40? Okay. I'm getting a lot of salt and pepper as well, but a lot of, for some reason, in the uh, the sideburns. So yeah. I look like Grandpa Monster. <laughs> so like, like, why is it doing that? You know. Yeah, so I, 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 yeah, that's where I've I've got it on the sides too. That's why I kind of shave it a little, like a little shorter. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I, I'm for. I mean, I'm 41, so I, I like saying like, yeah, I'm 40. You know, I'm I'm very distinguished now. Maybe I, not. I don't know. I, I, I that's, well, do you have, I guess one of the questions I mean, I want to ask is like, do you, do you have kids? Cause I have, I'm, we're expecting our first in April. Uh, my wife and I have a, an adopted daughter. Cool. Um, she is two. She's a little over two. Um, so yes, I mean, we do have kids. It wasn't a, I guess it wasn't naturally. Um, but yes, we, we have one daughter who just turned two and she's, she's wild. Yeah. She's, uh, yeah, she's running around. She's talking a lot. Um, yeah, so, pretty uh, crazy. So you're just expecting your first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where it's just we just put up a registry today on on our we social did. media, and it's just like there's a lot to expect. But we're also thinking like ahead. And I had this conversation in the last episode, so maybe I don't know what you're watching with uh, with her when she's two. But to keep like on theme, it's like I I want him to be cool. You know, we, okay. we're going to have a cool kid. Oh, you have I a boy? Like, yeah, we're going to have a boy. Okay. We, we, we both wanted to know. And yeah. she works. Uh, she's a dance teacher, so she's around kids all the time. While she loves all of her students, you know, kids are crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's like we're both like we don't want to have a kid who sucks. We want to have an awesome kid. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get him. You know, he's going to be my co-host when he when he can. Uh -huh. uh, I want to get him into, like, into horror. But how do you do that with a kid? Like, where do you start out with if you do? Because mm. I'm I'm sure. What's your daughter's name, if I may ask? Uh, Zara. Zara. She, Zara. I'm sure she has not seen Poultry Geist. Night of the uh, Dead. My wife hasn't even seen it. Wow. Okay. Well, we're gonna have a lot to discuss there. Yeah. Well, I but I tell her I'm like, you know what? I'm okay that you haven't seen that. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. If I really want her to see, to see it. Well, that's the question because <laughs> as we're talking about you and I, like we had a great conversation off the air. That's like we. I just got to press record because you and I, we can just have a regular conversation because I want to know about your path and how you got there. And that's why it's just like formulating this kind of character building of just getting up to poultry geist. So maybe well, we could take a step, few steps back before the kid, before the wife who doesn't watch all of your movies. You lived in New York or you live mm -hmm. in New York. And like, where are you from? I guess originally, if we could go back. Yeah. Originally, uh, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Go Cavs. Go Cavs. Um, and uh, I, I say Cleveland because I was there until I was about five. And then my family moved to a suburb of Cleveland that no one's ever heard of. It's called uh, Brunswick, Ohio. No. You ever hear of it? I yeah. don't know East Brunswick, New Jersey. Yeah. Um, so it's, um, it's a little suburb of Cleveland. Um, yeah, about like 25 minutes outside of 
uh, the downtown area. But I always just say to people, Cleveland, and then now because of LeBron James, everyone's like, yeah, Cleveland, I know Cleveland, yeah. Um, which, by the way, um, I'm not mad at him. You know, he, he fulfilled his promise. I'm a huge basketball fan, by the way. He brought the championship to the Cavaliers. And, uh, you know, I know his when he went to the Heat, it was a little dicey, but he came back. He delivered the championship. And, um, yeah. He yeah, didn't go so to the Knicks. He didn't go to my team, so he can go screw. So, yeah. So, hey, the Cavs play the Knicks on Tuesday. Okay. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, from Cleveland, uh, you know, grew up there, went to high school there, went to college um, in the Cleveland area. And then after college, moved to New York City. Okay. You know, at the time, it was like, okay, well, I, I want to be a performer. Do I go to Los Angeles or do I go to New York? Well, all of my friends and my girlfriend at the time went to New York. So I went to New York and uh, that was in 2003. Um, was that and- a culture shock to go from Cleveland, Ohio, or, you know, a suburb of to go to uh, New York City? I yeah, take it I for mean, granted. you know, I, <laughs> it, it's funny. I like. I think at the time I was like, yeah, I'm getting out of Cleveland. I'm going to go to New York, you know, Ohio, screw Ohio, whatever. But I love going home. I, I love, you know, I, in fact, it's funny. Um, so my wife and I and, and Zara, we live uh, right outside of, well, not right outside, but we live um, outside of Manhattan in a little town in New Jersey called Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. Um, I mean, you could see like, if you're, if you're in Atlantic Highlands down at kind of like down by the water, you can see Manhattan across the bay. I actually, after 11 years of Manhattan, I was the one who was like, I can't take these crowds anymore, man. Like, I still want to be accessible to the city for auditions and whatever, but I, I, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. I can't take these crowds. I can't stand it. Um, so where was I going with this now? I mean, now, like, you know, we're in the suburbs and, uh, I love going back to Ohio now. I, 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 feel like I, I saw the city. I did it 11 years. I think I can count myself as having done it. And now yeah, if I time. need to, yeah, now if I need to, now I just hop on the boat and it goes across <laughs> the water. I go do my thing and I come back. Look, even for me who grew up Long Island, you know, Brooklyn, uh, Long Island, you know, living in Queens now, it, it's too much for me. Like, yeah, I, I really, my wife would never move to a, she's from Chicago. Oh. But she would never move to a suburb. She loves Queens. She just loves Queens. But I don't know. I'm a quiet guy, you know, watching my horror movies alone. I don't like a lot of <laughs> that's that's just me. But I do like I said before, happy wife, happy life. So you know, does she, she don't like to go. She doesn't like horror movies. Uh, so <laughs> her, it's a challenge. Like she just brought up yesterday. Are they going to bring uh make another uh, Fear Street for Netflix? Okay. So I got her into that. So if it's kind of like teenage, and if they also don't show it, they don't show the actual stabbing. They don't show the actual wound if it's implied. Ah. So I will try to navigate with that. Okay. And say, will you try this? And maybe if she's in the right mood, she will, you know, watch something dark with me. Like she watched, she did watch Squid Games, uh-huh. uh, Squid Game. But I, as I told her about this interview you'll never ever want to watch poultry guys or anything trauma does because it would so traumatize my, her. I mean, so my wife actually loves horror movies. I just didn't want her to necessarily watch poultry guys just because, you know, it's, you know, anyone who's seen it knows what it is. And, uh, you know, well, let's, let's keep that. I want to keep that because I don't want to, I know I'm going to spend too much time on there. So what would you think your, your, your first big break is? Cause you have a, a great resume, you know, uh, the first VHS film, Blue Bloods, you know, I, you've done commercials. Mm-hmm. When did you feel like, okay, this is for real? Like, I moved to Cleveland from Cleveland for I did I re- did the right thing. I don't have to move home as a failure or whatever, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, um, okay, the, this uh, how do I put this so I don't sound like a complete jackass? Um, I actually don't feel like I've hit that point where I'm like. I feel like, yes, I, I have, I have had some success, but I'm always still reaching, you know, um, my wife and I talk about this all the time. Like, you know, like when, when do you say like, yes, I, uh, I made it. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I don't personally feel like that. Um, 
my goal has always been people say, oh, you're going to move to New York. Oh, yeah. What are you trying to be a famous actor? <laughs> my goal has always been, no, actually, that has never been my goal. I want to just be a working actor. Mm. I, I, my goal is to be one of those guys that you're like, hey, I know this guy. I know I know him, but I don't know why I know him. <laughs> yeah. Like, he looks familiar to me. Like, there's so many actors out there that work constantly that you don't know their names, but they're in everything, right? They're the best. They're usually the best. That's, that's my goal. If, if yeah. you ever have me back on the show, that's sure. where the next time I want to be like, yeah, I'm like steadily working. Yeah. And I, I'm not there yet. Who, who knows if I will get there, but that's the goal. That's like, that's the goal to just be like continuously like, yep, I'm working on this. I'm working on that. Oh, a couple lines here, a couple lines there. You see me. Now you don't. <laughs> oh, I pop up here again. Now I'm gone. You know what I mean? That's, that's kind of like my goal as like an actor. Yeah. Does that sound silly? I don't know. No, I, I kind of, re I relate to that a lot. It goes along with the whole, we're, we're vibing already. That's how I am in radio. I'm glad of whatever successes I've, I've had, but I'm, I ain't make it. I'm really hoping people donate diaper funds to the registry because I don't make a lot of money. <laughs> I didn't know? see your registry list. I'll send you, I'll send you something. Did you, oh, you post it on Instagram? Not yet. I couldn't find a link okay. to Instagram. So on my other social, well, thank you in advance. All right. I, I'll send I, you something. Cause now I, now I can relate, you know, I can, I, I know you are going to need a lot of diapers. Like when people were asking us like, Oh, what, you know, what do you want for Christmas? What do you, you know, I mean, I know it's not very fun, but getting a box of diapers is, is actually like, it becomes the greatest thing in the world. You're like, yes. Oh my God. I don't have to spend 30 bucks on this box of diapers. This is going to last me like a month, you and, know? And how's this for a transition? Because I don't think anybody, I think it could be worse. I'm preparing myself almost by watching poultry guys and uh -huh. probably the craziest <laughs> shitting scene <laughs> just to say it, you know, just to be, blunt with it the craziest shitting scene i've ever seen uh not because i've seen so many shitting scenes yeah <laughs> uh, so i i guess to go there uh because i i'm i i'm glad i rewatched it recently i just found out about the documentary so shame on me uh-huh uh, -huh. uh so it's funny there are a lot of people who i don't have a lot of horror friends either okay so i usually have to go to now netflix or whatever streaming and i go for what's weird looking like i'm sure like a lot of people with with music what's weird looking with cool title mm -hmm. sometimes the actors but for me usually if it's a big actor they don't always go there so i try mm -hmm. to go for what's the more obscure and poultry geist night of the chicken dead was new when netflix was new for me a few years ago and i've never had to like pause movies and be like what am i watching right now but i had to finish it <laughs> So <laughs> and if people don't know, hit pause right now. Find Poultry Guys. It's on Tubi. Uh, Is it on Tubi right now? Okay. Yeah. It kind of, you know, it, it, it makes the rounds. Yeah. 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 It, pop, it pops in and out or just watch certain scenes online. I mean, I don't need to describe it more than it's Night of the Chicken Dead. We'll get into maybe some specifics. But was that your first lead role? Uh, how in it? Because it's a, a trauma film, right? Or because I know yeah, it doesn't and, follow the tropes, but. And actually, it's funny when I um, got the role, um, I actually and, you know, people are gonna be like, oh, you didn't know, but I actually wasn't quite sure what trauma was. Um, basically, what I was doing. So this was early on in, you know, my my time in New York. And uh, back then, this was before the, the whole digital age, you know, you would get these um, every week, they they were a magazine or a newspaper basically called backstage, right? And it was a newspaper that, you know, had all the auditions going on in the city in New York. And so, you know, flipping through that, I saw this ad for Poultry Geist and it, you know, called for like a kind of like a nerdier guy who ends up being the hero uh, in, the, in the end. And uh, this was when you had to like mail your headshot in and we were still using black and white headshots. We were still using headshots, right? I mean, now it's like, you know, if you have enough followers on Instagram, you, you, know, you, you could, you know, um, so send a link, put my letter in the snail mail and a 
a couple weeks later, you know, got an audition. And, and so after the, the round of auditions and callbacks, you know, et cetera, et cetera, when I got the role, I called my brother. I was like, yeah, I just, I just booked this like movie, you know, I, I have never really heard of it. It's a trauma film. And he was like, wait, what? You, you, you're in a tra-. And he's like, you've never seen, you know, Sergeant Kabuki man, or, you know, and he started listening to all these other ones. I was like, well, no, I haven't not. No, I haven't. And he's like, yeah, they've got like a huge cult following and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I, I, I learned, I learned that that was true. Yeah. They do have a very big cult following and, and very dedicated and loyal fans, which is, which is really, really nice actually. And don't um, feel bad because I will, I, what I forgot to mention watching it and just the way it was shot introduced me to trauma. Okay. I, I was, uh, I saw the toxic Avenger years and years ago, maybe parts of it, but I'm like, wait a minute. They have this whole world. Yeah. And I have no yeah. idea. So poultry geist opened my world. Oh, trauma as okay. well. So, so they, they gave me, they gave me a few films to watch before we started shooting. And uh, I, I remember specifically one of them was terror firmer. And I was like, and I was watching it. And I thought to myself, mm, what the hell am I getting myself into? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but I've never had more fun probably shooting something than, than that. I mean, it was like horror film summer camp. You know what I mean? <laughs> like every, everything that Lloyd talks about, like, the crappy food living in a shitty basement floor, everyone living together, every, you know, long days, long nights shooting, uh, you know, it's hot, it's sweaty, it's sticky. Um, it's all true, but it was, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, what was the, cause without knowing what you were auditioning for and what was the, cause yeah, it is interesting just to flash back to 2006 when it came out and what was available then yeah versus what's available now so yeah don't feel bad it's like i really had a backtrack you know it is crazy but what was the audition process what did you have to do was it anything over the top like what do you think made them choose you for that well the, the initial audition you know they give you the sides you know which is like your copy of parts of the script that you read with the with the reader who's you know doing the lines opposite of you uh you did have to sing and then that was the initial audition for the callbacks. You, you had to continue to do those things, but as it got closer and closer, then they kind of wanted to see like, all right, you know, there are some scenes in here where like, there's some not male nudity, but like, you know, you have to show your butt. You're going to have to, you know, the, yeah, there's, there's, you know, you're gonna have to be topless. Oh boy. Look at that. Please. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, I'll sh- I'm going to show you if you're, if you're not watching on zoom, I'm, it's just the beginning. I didn't show what I could, you know, any nipples or anything, but you hugging, you know, forgive me. I don't know her name. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Wendy. Yeah. Oh, uh, Wendy. Or Kate is the, is the actress's name. Uh, yeah. You're, you're hugging each other topless outside the, uh, the site for another chicken before it's built another chicken. Uh, another chicken so, chicken. um, you know, so eventually in some of the callbacks, they were like, okay, we do need you to get down to like, your underwear are you comfortable with that so which i did i mean one guy i remember he was he went in before me he got totally naked (laughs) he didn't have to i mean but they were like okay (laughs) (laughs) and they said to me they're like well the guy before you got totally naked you don't have to do that but you have to at least like get down to your like boxer briefs and stuff like that so like okay so i mean that was that was kind of like the most intense part of the audition um and something that I was, you know, that was new to me, you know, I didn't go out for many like auditions where you had to be in your underwear. Obviously I wasn't doing any like male underwear modeling uh, in my day. So. And that would have been when, a weird, like you, you weren't tricked into doing an, an adult film. Yeah, You're like yeah. what kind of poultry is, what are we talking about here? <laughs> so, but when it did come to shoot some of the scenes that were a little more risque, they were very good about like, okay, it's going to be a close set. Um, it's just going to be the, the the main actors and like a couple people from the crew. It wasn't like, you know, tons and tons of people around. So they were very respectful of like your privacy and, you know, making sure that no one was on there filming, like, or like, just like no one was there who shouldn't really have been there. You know what I mean? So they were very good about that. What about the experiences? One of the best things about trauma, if not the best, are the, the over the top special effects. Have you had any experience with that before? And what was it like just being smeared in 
blood and poop and shit and you know i i know not literally <laughs> blood and poop and shit but what is, what is that like it's like you were in a double dare you know <laughs> physical yeah, challenge <laughs> yeah um i mean i actually thought it was a lot of fun to tell you the truth i mean you know like when do you ever get to just be covered in just like fake vomit and shit you know <laughs> i mean it was a lot of I personally liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. The only the only thing was one of the days, um, and I feel like it was one of the fake vomit days. Uh, there was one shower at the house where everyone stayed, and um, you know there was no hot water, um, so that wasn't awesome. When you had to like wash all this oh. crap off of you, so someone in the crew, I'm, I'm blanking on her name. I think it was Becky. Uh, um, actually rented a hotel room for the actors and let them use the shower there to like, you know, okay. because, you know, you're covered in just this, you know, well, you can see some of the stuff in the background, just all this, like whatever you can think of you're covered in head to toe. So that was, that was nice that she did that. But the, um, I actually really enjoyed all that stuff. It was just, you know, not having access to the shower at the time was maybe not awesome, but you know, we figured it out. Was there any, because again, this is, it's one of those films, because I've watched hundreds of films over the years, and there's just a few, maybe I've smoked all my brain cells away, but there's only a <laughs> few that really stick with me, and Poultry Geist is one of those, you know, long, that's why I sought you out for an interview. I'm like, I this is, you know, this is like, this is one of these films that I, I don't know, it's like had this effect on me, even though it's over the top and ridiculous. Is there any scene that you were like, we spoke about the nudity, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. that's okay. To show, I'm sure you're, I don't remember how you're, you're, you have a nice butt, right? It was okay. I thought it was no, okay. Tidy, tidy whities. I did shave it for the, for the <laughs> shoot. I, yeah, I did just to make sure it was, you know, presentable. <laughs> that's, that, that's funny. That... <laughs> I would have done the same, my man. I, I get it. But is this what the scene that you, why you don't want your wife to watch it when you're humping the cash register? Um, it, no, I mean, much? maybe the, okay. maybe the scene where like, <laughs> I jerk off the giant chicken <laughs> penis and it, <laughs> it jizzes it's in my everywhere. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> that one maybe isn't one of my best moments. I don't know. Uh, you know, not that the, one maybe not that one maybe feet. Not, not the feet. That's okay. That's, I think that's all right. All right. Uh, <laughs> I think it's the giant <laughs> penis that, you know, uh, just might be like, all right, well, you know, it, when it, it might not have been my greatest moment and uh, you know maybe i don't need her to see me being like come on you know <laughs> actually that wasn't even supposed to be me that was supposed to be wendy okay yeah and uh so if what about because it sounds like a fun experience and i didn't get it again i i just found out about the documentary a poultry mm -hmm. in motion uh truth is stranger than fiction i gotta find out because that's i'm hopefully that's making the rounds i didn't see it on amazon or anything yet what about some of the, I know you spoke about like the temperature of taking a shower, but was there anything that was really frustrating that you weren't sure it was, you know what, here's the thing that, that caught my eye, that the set was taken down early when you, before you guys were ready to wrap, like, how did that happen? Like, you know what? I, hmm. So, so the question is, what, what would it be? Like, like some other, other challenge? Yeah. Some other maybe frustrating things uh, just about, I'm just trying to think what else could be more frustrating than washing poo off you <laughs> you know what that yeah, so it, i guess what else was because you had the whole documentary i was i never would expect a documentary after, after just the movie itself yeah so like what else could i see when i eventually do watch it in the documentary that's you know uh that was a big deal in filming this um you know there was i had to stay in one room with five guys uh you know when when it was like time to sleep and stuff like that and uh thankfully we we were the only room that had a working air conditioner um because you know it was in buffalo we were in buffalo it was summertime that could have that could have been frustrating you know i don't i don't know about anyone else but if i'm too hot like you can't sleep right so thankfully we had the only we had a air conditioner for the only room that had it although the room did smell like cheese by the end of the, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the end of the three months we were there um you know be well, what about your, uh, if you're struggling, I don't want to ask you something if you're kind of, if it, you're struggling to find like a negative thing, because it sounds like it was a fun experience. So well, I it guess... was a lot of fun, but I was actually going to say, you know, one of the challenging things is, you know, I mean, there were, 
because it's a because it's not a union film, right? It's non union, it's non SAG, right? There's really no like rules you have to abide by. So I mean, we would shoot from you could sh- we would shoot from like seven a.m. till until we were done, you know, and and that could you know that got that certainly got to be a grind after a while, you know what I mean? Like, whereas if you're on like a SAG film, there's like, you know, there's rules about like, okay, you have to have a break here and you have to have a break there. And now you're into overtime. So then you get a break because of that. And you know sure. what I mean? So, so, you know, uh, you know, you're in this abandoned McDonald's, it's hot, it's sticky, there's flies, you know, with me, I think I, I don't know if we talked about this off air, but like, you know, sometimes it's like, okay, I need to like step away have a little like personal space and i think maybe the most frustrating thing is there really there wasn't anywhere to really do that to like just like go off and be alone for a sec like if if, if it got too much you know um i haven't seen the entire documentary but like i wasn't expecting to go back to a question you had asked you know what what was kind of like a shock to me i wasn't expecting when like we weren't filming to have people still filming me and interviewing me about stuff like, Oh, well, how'd you feel about that scene? And it was oh. like, Whoa, okay. What, what, why am I, what is this? Why am I talking so it to was about planned this? at the same time? Like it was kind of like a, Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I specifically remember like, you know, um, I, one time someone asked me something and, and I was like, and I think someone was having like an actual legitimate problem shooting something. And they were like, what do you feel about that? What do you, how do you feel about it? And I was like, you know, they're like actually having a problem. Can we not talk about this right at this moment? You know, so I, everyone's gonna be like, oh, that Jason, he's such a jackass. Like he's such a diva. But the most that frustrating, sounds frustrating thing, frustrating, yeah. You know, like, you know, sometimes you just need a little decompression time, like step back, step away. Why do you think, why do you think movie stars have their own trailers, right? So they can go and like be alone for a little bit to, uh, you know, get their, their bearings. There wasn't any of that. I mean, not that I need and or deserve a trailer, but it, I suppose it would have been nice to have like, okay, go off and like, you know, decompress in your hut or your tent. Sure. And we'll come get you when you're when we're ready. I mean, there was really nowhere to go. It was like everyone was there all the time. It was interesting. Uh you I didn't know that it was an, an abandoned McDonald's yeah. in Buffalo. That's pretty. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, I guess because I don't want to stay in Poultry Guys the entire time, even though again I, I love the film. But I was wondering, I guess that there was a maybe like with my question with that. I guess with the because that was an unexpected. That's interesting though to find that out because that's not something I would have thought about. Mm-hmm. But if there was like a certain prop that took forever, like it just wasn't working. You know, sticking the broom through the guy, like did that yeah. not work, or you know the uh, the chicken boobs, like the, the things like not work a lot. You know the the scene that took the longest to film that you may not actually even think it would was the graveyard scene in the very beginning. Oh, wow! And in fact, that was I I actually think that was the I'm trying to remember that may have been the first scene we filmed, and there was a big fight on not like fist fight. There was a big blow up about the dial. It wasn't even actually any of the special effects. It was the dialogue, um, the the script. When I think the line is, oh, you know, when the zombie arms come out, and I say something like, "Oh, you're so ambidextrous." That wasn't the. That was something I had made up, because they were. I don't remember what the original line was, but they were fighting about it so you know so intensely that like i i i want to say one of the writers like walked off you know like stormed out and and you know we, this was an overnight scene so you can imagine everyone's tired everyone's frustrated um so that was actually it's funny you would think it would have been a special effects uh problem but it was actually a script discrepancy that took up the most time the other scene that took the longest to shoot was the scene with me and Lloyd in the basement when we were dancing together, but not because there was anything wrong technically. It's just, he's, you know, he, he's Lloyd Coffin, right? And so it's very hard to do anything opposite of him because he is very funny and he never really knew his lines and didn't really know anything going on. So that scene took 
forever to shoot because I just couldn't stop laughing the entire time. So we kind of wasted a lot of time on that too. So it, it actually wasn't even the special effect. It was me as an actor during one day, couldn't get my shit together and a line discrepancy, which took the longest. Funny thing, the line discrepancy, I mean, spoiler alert, all these years later, I mean, you're getting fingered by a, a zombie. I mean, what are we doing here, man? Uh, <laughs> and I'll just wrap up by saying, like, you mentioned, like, how funny Lloyd is. What was it really like working with Lloyd Kaufman, the legendary Lloyd Kaufman? He is very, very good to his actors. He treats his actors very well. Okay, anything we needed, he he would, you know, make sure we got. The crew he was not so nice to them, but I, you know, screaming and swearing and yelling and, you know, but I think that's one of the reasons why people want to work with him because it's like, this is what, and they're not getting paid. Right. Mm. I think they just want, because he's such a legend, like, okay, we know what we're getting into. I mean, he would call people fucking retards and, (laughs) you know, uh, you know, and uh, fuck you. And, you know, I don't know if I can swear on this show, you can, and then, you and then he'd be it. like, Fine. and then he'd be like to the actors, "Hey, do you need a coffee? Do you, do you need anything? What the fuck? I told you more blood, you stupid asshole! What do you need? Do you need uh, something from craft service? You know what I mean? Like, so oh, wow. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. But I think people want, <laughs> I think people expect that and want that because, like, that's just yeah. You know, wow, it's like that's... mayhem and chaos and art all mixed into one. That's a trauma Big, film. Happy family. Yeah. That's a trauma film. That sums it up pretty much right there. Uh, and one other film experience I get before I want because I want to talk to you about your trilogy, your book trilogy. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, is VHS, which is completely different than trauma as it's a found footage film. Mm-hmm. So what is that? Uh, the whole process, like auditioning for found footage. And is it ad libbed? Uh, do you have because there's a scene where your character spider is running are you mm-hmm. holding the camera mm-hmm. I will, I've never spoken to anybody who's been in a found uh, footage film so I'm really curious the VHS as from like an actor's standpoint is maybe one of the more interesting and challenging films you could do because yes a lot of it is ad-libbed so if you're a fan of improv it's it's great in that sense, you get to kind of flex those improv muscles. You know, when we were shooting it, we had kind of like a skeletal outline of where the scene needed to go. Mm. But then you could just kind of, you know, run with it um, as long as you got from point A to point B. Uh, So as an actor, that's a great challenge to, you know, in the moment, all right, how do we get here to there and make it you know organic and make and make make it through point a to point b so i mean that was a lot of fun they gave us the camera and said okay you know and in, in not so much the scenes with like the special effects with the deaths but the scenes where you know we're kind of like you know just bullshitting and stuff like that they were like okay here's the camera like like when we were in the car and i you know, it's a, it's a line that's kind of, I don't know if you catch it, but I asked some, I asked like my friends, like, what's the most you've ever masturbated or something like that? You know, because spite, you know, that was ad lib, right? Like spiders, just that kind of weird guy who's, you know. Um, that's why I like know. watching and closed captioning because some things you don't pick up, but you see it. I think that was one of the lines. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, well, you know why? Because, you know, spiders, just this weird He's dude. Spider. He's spider. Uh, you know, um, but so you know, as an actor to be given that freedom to just kind of like, all right, let's see where this goes. That, that, that to me is one of the like most fun things about being an actor and a performer is like, all right, let's see what we can come up with organically. Um, Now, like I said, the special effects scenes, no, we had nothing. We weren't holding the camera and stuff like that. And my death scene, I actually had, uh, um, I had to get, uh, half torso made right so like from my waist up so they had to put me in this like body cast thing to mold it um and then at when I did fall then you know I had nothing to do with you know they then took over and you know that piece of special effects fell over and there were blood uh-huh. packs built into the forehead so that when you know they was stabbed they 
you know oh okay and i, I was actually just kind of standing off to the side watching it you know because you know they're not going to put me in charge of that it was i'm guessing very hard to make uh <laughs> right you know here, what's Jason. that like you're watching yourself get killed essentially yeah well what i like more so about about that is the guy who built it told me that it's now part of his Halloween decorations. <laughs> so I like knowing that I'm a Halloween display somewhere in upstate New York, you know, like on someone's lawn, like who, who, who's that weird guy? <laughs> like, I hope I, that's in your, is that on your uh, website? That should be in your credits. I'd be proud of that too, man. That's Halloween hilarious. decoration. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So-and-so's house. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I should put cool. that on my resume. People would be like, what the hell? What is he talking about? <laughs> yeah, well, that's funny. Uh, did you expect that to be the the franchise it became? No, uh, you... no, no, I really did. not uh, I but I'm so happy it did because it I mean, it was a lot of fun to do. And, I, and it's always so great to see things like that, build that kind of following. And at the time, you know, I didn't think we really knew exactly what it was going to turn into. So it's mm -hmm. always a surprise to kind of, you know, See, because there's four of them now, right? I feel like I kind of lost track. Yeah, there was one that I guess came on to be now that was called Bootleg, but I don't, I started watching it. I'm like, wait a minute, is this really VHS or is this a bootleg ripoff? So I got to look that up to see. Okay, if, see, now that one I was not familiar with. This is just, new to me, VHS Yeah, this bootleg. year, I guess I started oh, okay. watching it. Okay. Uh, so maybe there's a, a fifth one. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's really special. We were talking about, I talked to a lot of my guests on the Mothership podcast, Appetite for Distortion, which I accidentally put up the logo again before, or that was just a, uh, you know, subliminal message to yeah, listen to that to as well. <laughs> but it's like how you define success and all that. But the fact that, you know, just here talking just about two of your projects, you're part of these two families, these, these the, the trauma family and this VHS, these legacy you know, not just straight to not straight to VHS to use upon uh situation, but you're a part of this uh folklore being told, you know, whether how big or small the part, because I know VHS there there's an anthology where uh -huh. versus poultry guys, you're the lead. It's different, but you're still a part of both and part of these larger uh horror families or film families. I think that's pretty cool. I never thought of it that way, actually. All right, there uh, you go. Yeah, yeah. Put that one in your pocket. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I will. I'm going to file that away for later. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's true. But to, to, to tell you the truth, though, like, I like, I kind of like, I think we were talking before, like, you know, what what's my ultimate goal as an actor? See, I like that about VHS. Like, oh, I, I know you're in this film, but I like I recognize you, but I don't know why I do. See, I kind of like that. I kind of like flying under the radar like mm -hmm. that. Um, that's what I meant when like I say that's my ultimate goal to be just this working actor that you know you know, but you don't know why. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know, people listen, like, this guy's fucking what what is this guy on? Like, who doesn't want to be like famous? You know, but, but like I get it just like working steadily and a part of these, like you said, these projects that are like now, you know, they're like, what, how did you phrase it? You said they're like part of this folklore of horror. Is that what you said? Yeah. This, just this horror family, this larger pool. Of, it's not just a, a one-off, uh, which can, which is fine. You know, we can be a cult classic or whatever, but the, which poltergeist is, but the fact that it's part of the larger trauma family, or somebody who discovers, you know, uh, you know, class of uh, Newcomb High and then uh -huh. wants to watch the rest of them and, and, and finds Poltergeist. Or you're like me who goes backwards. And same thing with VHS, that you're an extension of something larger. And I think that's pretty cool. So um, one of my biggest, mm, let's just say this will probably haunt me until I'm no longer on this earth, was one of my biggest auditions was for a Marvel project and it was just this random you know guy on a it was a it was a marvel tv show it wasn't one of the movies it was a okay. one of the tv shows um i did not get it but you talk about like a being in something that's like a sure. larger family now that would have been like to be like oh yeah i'm i'm in this marvel show just to have like to be able to be like marvel on your resume 
that's now talk about being part of like a larger family that would have been pretty awesome is when people people have asked me like oh what's like one audition you wish you would have gotten that you didn't get it's it's always that one that one constantly like because you know the frustrating thing is like you don't know you don't you never really find out why you didn't get something it you know what i mean yeah. like you know you could give like the best audition in the world and you know get the callbacks and get the you know you know the callbacks and the and the compliments oh that was a great take and blah 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 and you know what you if you don't get the job you kind of never find out why at least i've never found out why like it could and it could be for something as simple as you know what the director decided to cast their cousin and you know it could be something just as stupid you know we were looking for someone who's a little taller right yeah you know, right. uh, say that yeah. you know you've got brown hair we wanted someone with red hair and, and and it's like that's something i've had to learn and still struggle with is like letting go of things that like mm -hmm. i did not get that one i'm having trouble with just because it's like a that would have been an amazing credit to have b it would have been an amazing credit to have <laughs> and, and and you know and i actually felt like the audition was really good now it was a it was a self tape though which i'm not that is definitely not my specialty. I'm getting better at them, I suppose, but there's a whole art and science behind those two. Um, and maybe like my self tape just sucked. Maybe it was like, dude, we couldn't even see you. We couldn't hear you. We couldn't, you know, I don't know. Well, there are a lot of variables and I identify with a lot of them too, just with my radio portion of it, where I, when I was in the phase of sending out demos, uh, classic rock stations across the country and, Sometimes you never know. Is it my accent? Am I speaking too slowly, too fast? Am I not saying their call letters right? Is my sense of humor that I'm using stupid, which it probably is. So there's a lot of, yes, there's a lot of different variables and it's frustrating. And you know what? At the end of the, of the day, I'm sure it was because you didn't have that sweet mustache at the time. That's what it was. God dang it. <laughs> and, you'll, and you'll get DC. You'll get DC instead. Okay. I know, and I know it's not as cool, I guess, these days. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I. I, I like Batman. Batman's pretty cool. Pretty cool. You know, what they're going a different. They're going a different direction with Superman. I wonder what they're going to do. I haven't gotten a call to audition yet. I, uh, I'm surprised. You For know, Superman? I am. I am five eight. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as a, a what they call a short king, myself. Well, you're taller than me. I'm five six. Uh -huh. So uh, I, we want to be represented. I mean, hey, if Tom Cruise can be, you know, uh, yeah, you, can, you you can do it. You can I just learned, okay, this, this made me feel better. I just learned I'm the same height as Zac Efron. So look come on. That. And yeah. I look almost identical almost. too. So, I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, <laughs> I'm close. <laughs> well, still it's uh it is very cool, but the transition is, do you have no control over that? Only what you can do. Yes. But what you do have control over is the mighty pen or I guess uh -huh. in, in this day, day and age, the, the keyboard. So, when did you decide? That was a good that, transition, by the way. This is the experience in radio. This is what you do. This is what sometimes you do. Sometimes it, yeah. it shines through, sometimes. <laughs> so as we know, like you wanted to be, you know, what you are, a working actor and be successful at that. When did the writing come in? Because you're going to come out with your second book, The Mysterious Happenings at Two Morning View. Was, is the first. One, mm -hmm. There's one out now. Mm -hmm. So the second one coming out and the third, obviously, trilogy. Yes, it is going to be a trilogy. And like I say to everyone who sh shows some interest in it, it will only be a trilogy. I won't make this go on and on and on forever. Um, but full disclosure, the writing came about when there was a point that, you know, I really, I was not getting any auditions. And the auditions I was kind of getting were not panning out, you know, um, just for whatever, for whatever reason, like we said, we will never know. And um, it got to a point where it was like, okay, I, I want to do something creative, right? But obviously, like this, this acting door that I'm knocking on, no one is answering right now, right? So well, I have to do something like as you know, as you can probably relate if you're a creative individual or you think you're a creative individual, you got to do something creatively. Well, that's what these po podcasts are come from. I've done uh yes, I work in radio, but my passion was doing classic rock radio or being on the air 
and it's such a change business. Ryan Seacrest has taken all the jobs. So it's like, I want to do something. I, huh? I'm, I'm saying that facetiously, <laughs> uh, but I want to do something creative. So that's what the GNR came thing, uh, GNR thing came from. And same thing with the horror thing. So I completely get that. Something creative when so, it's, everyone's not knocking at your door. You got to knock. And so I wanted it to also be something that like no one else told me yay or nay. You know what I mean? Like you go in for an audition and it's either you get the role or you don't. With the book, and here, wait a minute, I have it right here. I'm going to, if you don't mind, I don't know if you can see that. Probably well, not. Well, uh, there we go. Because you, you have the blurry yeah. background on. Yeah. No, I got um, it. You know, no one could say to me, like, you can't write that. That's a stupid idea. We're not, you know, you're not, you can't write that. I was, it was nice being like, you know what? Okay. And I'll be honest with you. I was maybe not the greatest student in the world. All right. Not that I was like a troublemaker, but it was just a little out there you know what i mean like i had a some hyperactivity problems probably and i you know i just i wasn't the greatest student english was not my greatest subject math was definitely not my greatest subject but i so you're thinking well this dude's gonna write a book and i thought you know what i don't care because no no one can control no one has control over it except me um i thought i had a pretty decent idea i thought and I liked the fact that I was kind of like in the driver's seat, you know, like I wasn't going in front of cast in front of a casting director who's like, no, you didn't get the role. See you later. You know, I was able to kind of like, this is my pet project. This is like, it is what I make of it. And right. so, um, yeah, so the, the first one is out, is available on paperback or uh, on the Kindle store. The second one is going to be paperback only. And that should be out, I want to say, maybe in a month or so. And that one's called The Mysterious Happenings on Hyde Avenue. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're all, the trilogy is kind of like it's going to come full circle. Um, now, I don't know if you know what it's about, but do I have time to tell you what it's about? Please. I was gonna, that was my next question. So it's a, I think it's interesting. Other people might not. But <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's actually a mixture of nonfiction and fiction. So this is the true part of it. This is the real part of it. So growing up and even to this day, uh, my mom and dad have had this very strange habit of staying up incredibly late. Okay. And I mean like three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, right? They'll my just be, like that. Yeah. they'll be up. But it, you know, it's, it's just, this just happened. We were back in Ohio for the holidays, right? And mm -hmm. Katie, my wife, my, her name's Katie, uh, got up in the middle of the night to like, I don't know, get a drink of water or something. It was like two o'clock in the morning. She went downstairs and my dad is making food. <laughs> it's 2 a.m. And, and he's like, oh, hey, sweetheart, how you doing? Want something to eat? And she's like, uh, no, it's <laughs> two o'clock in the morning. I don't, I'm good. And he was like making like a bologna sandwich or some shit. <laughs> uh, so um, so, so they, they've always had this weird uh, habit of doing this so like when I was in high school which is when where the book takes place 1996 which was actually my sophomore year of high school okay um you know I would wake up and it'd be like three o'clock in the morning four o'clock in the morning and they'd be up I'd hear them and so in the story I, I'm like mentioning this to like some of my skater friends and they're like ah oh, dude you should go see what they're doing like one night go down there and try to see what they're doing I bet you they're like having sex or they're probably doing, <laughs> you know, they're probably like doing drugs or whatever. So I'm like, okay, fine. I will go down and I'm going to sneak down and see what they're up to. Why are they up this late? So in the book, I sneak down. They're actually not downstairs. I can't find them. Oh, where mm. are they? Where did they go? That's kind of where the mystery starts, right? That's a mysterious happening right there. It is right. Where are they? Because the house that I grew up in, which is where this book takes place, it's not a very large house. In fact, the house that's on the cover, uh, I don't know. This is really blurry. Um, I'll, I'll put up a picture when I okay, post The it. house that's on the cover is the house I grew up in. It's not big. It's a split level, you know, basic Midwestern kind of home. I'm looking so, at the, uh, on, on Amazon right now. I'm looking at it. Yeah, it so, looks like just a regular home. You know, so um, my best friend growing up, his real name was Brendan. And the first nice. girlfriend that I had in high school, her name was Laura. They're the other two main characters of the story. I actually changed their names. Uh, and I kind of enlist them to help me 
find out what where what is my family doing where are they going so late at night and so it does take a bit of a supernatural turn okay that's obviously when the fiction side of the story comes in um the supernatural part that happens did not happen to me or my family but uh everything else in the book is based off of either someone i know um you know, me growing up in 1996, I, I put the, the book in Pennsylvania, but it, okay. anyone who knows me knows it's Ohio. And my dad was very adamant about me. Oh, he's so crazy. He's like, well, I don't want someone coming to the house and stalking the house <laughs> because, you know, if, if it's set in Ohio, then everyone's going to know this house and they're going to come find it. And then we're going to have people bothering us all day. <laughs> now, I appreciate him thinking that it would get to that level of like <laughs> Amityville horror, you know, like, like the Goonie house, right? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, the Goonie house is the Goonie house. Everyone knows it. I, I would love this trilogy to hit that level of success. I don't know if that will happen, but I was like, dad, I don't think anyone's going to come stalk you and be like, you know, that's the house. We got to get in there. You know, Hey, you never know. Right. I no, you put never my, know. Put my energy out that maybe it would happen, but for my dad's sake, it's now in Pennsylvania. Although Fair if anyone enough. listens to this knows that I'm lying about that. Um, <laughs> so maybe, maybe they will end up in, in uh, Ohio and, you know, outside of my dad's house at 2 a.m. They can have some bologna with him. Uh, yeah, he, just needs, so. <laughs> he, needs a, he needs a friend at 2 a.m. Yeah, needs a yeah. Um, so anyway, so I enlist my, so so we go on this quest to like find my family to see what they're doing because there have been a lot of strange happenings at the house, right? Now, I don't want to give too much away, but um, so it, like I said, it is a mixture of fiction and nonfiction. And, um, you know, the, the story does, revolve around me my best friend in real life and my first girlfriend from high school who i'm still friends with you know obviously we broke up but nice. but we are we are still friends uh she i i uh, we lost touch for a while and um when i put the book out i, I didn't even really tell i just kind of put it out there and she did end up reading it and and uh and we got back in touch that way and um, okay yeah and so um the has second- she seen poultry guys you're, you're, no, no, okay. <laughs> and I'm not going to mention it to her. <laughs> she, she's even worse with technology than I am, so I don't think she has. I don't even think she has Netflix or anything. Okay. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But um, but yeah. So I, I'm very, I'm very proud of this. I mean, again, it's just something that I wanted to do to create to keep the creative juices flowing and the and the mm-hmm. you know the 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 wheels greased right. Yeah. Um, because you know. You, acting you know you could be up one minute you're down the next minute and and this has really helped it's it's almost therapeutic in in a, yeah. in a way that it's helped me not just focus on one door this acting door that just isn't being opened right now this is this has opened up other doors that i never thought possible i just did my first horror convention uh in massachusetts where i was able to sell the book uh, and and go up there now. Obviously, people knew Poultry Ice and VHS and stuff like that. But one of the big things was when they when they contacted me to do the the convention was, hey, can I can I talk about my book and can I sell it there? And so you know that was something yeah. that was new to me. And I'm doing one more this year that I know of in South Carolina in September. And um, you know, so that's you know, you talk about like one door closing, another door opening. I don't want to say the acting door is totally closed right now. I'm not involved in anything right now, except writing the third book of the trilogy, but it's opened up all these other different things that I just never really kind of envisioned happening. Like, look, I'm talking to you. How about that? Who knew? Who knew? Um, I would not have guessed. And it's uh, it's kind of, again, to parallel your, your point, you know, I've done a lot of different things in my radio career. But I found a lot, you know, even though I had a job, I, I wasn't fulfilled, creatively fulfilled. Even when you're talking between the Rolling Stones and Led Zeppelin for 30 seconds, you can only be so creative or, uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. the FCC and all that. So it's just, I never would have imagined, you know, my other podcast and in here where I get to interview you from one of my favorite movies and, you know, people from Tales in the Crypt and Terrifier. Which oh, I love Tales in the Crypt. Yeah. 
we had Alcats on. I could see you being. Oh, I could see you would have been perfect for Tales from the Crypt. You definitely. You know, have that. Um, that was one of the shows that Brendan and I grew up on watching. Uh, discovered it by accident one day, um, and really fell in love with it. I think I have all the seasons on DVD actually. Oh, okay. But one of the this just made me think of this. One of the greatest compliments I've gotten about the book is that it's like goosebumps for adults. Now I know goosebumps is a little different than tales from the crypt, but tales from the crypt made me think of goosebumps for some reason. Um, People have described it as being goosebumps, but for adults. And that was, it's funny because I mentioned I was not a great student. English was not my best subject. The only books I read growing up were goosebumps books. (laughs) So hearing that was like, that was the only way my mom got me to read was, okay, here's some more goosebump books. Same, same. Yeah. Man. Oh, but I, you, I think you would dig the story. Now it's funny. The first book, there's a lot of swearing in it. Okay. Okay. I don't know if that does. I don't know if that offends you at all. I, I told you picture poultry guys is one of my favorite movies. Okay. So the, on, the, the, the guy gets right. a, a broom shoved up his ass out of a dick. Like I'm not, a, I'm not <laughs> so, offended. So you're not offended by anything. No. So, um, I, so I would describe it as like goosebumps for teens, but with a lot of swearing. Now the second book does not have as much swearing in it. Um, but I think if though, if you grew up reading those books, I think you would probably really enjoy it. What it sounds like, it sounds like, um, well, yes, I, I, I get that just from reading the, the synopsis, but something more relatable than those Netflix, uh, I don't know if it's a trilogy, but the house on haunted Hill, not the house on haunted Hill, the, the haunting of Hill house, the okay. haunting of Blum house, those. And honestly, I think they're a little overrated because they're, uh, kind of, they're kind of boring. Okay. You know, a little, a little drawn out. And this sounds like it's not going to be like that. And where that's is kind of like a goosebumps for adults. But to me, that's, that's, I don't know. That's, it's, it wasn't as engaging as I would like it to be, but I mean, you had me as uh, you know, he's popular enough for your average punk rock teen, which is just right away. This speaks to me in addition to so, all the horror stuff and the weird parents. I mean, my mom's up until like <laughs> four in the morning. So there's a lot of things I, I identify. Uh, if you, with. if you went to school in the late nineties, um, now yeah. w- when I was in high school, I had like my, my three clicks, right? I had my drumline friends cause I played the drums. I was in drumline. I had my skater friends and I had my theater friends. Right. And I think this book kind of really speaks to a lot of people in that late nineties in high school who were like a part of those, those gangs, those clicks. <laughs> I-, I really do think it really I, I hope it comes off as authentic because a lot of the things in the book were just drawn from my own personal experience. All of the punk references, all of the skateboarding references. These were things that we just did every day. Like my, you know, one of my good friends had a half pipe in his backyard. We'd all hang out and skate at, you know, I was in a green day cover band, which oh, is yeah. my favorite band. Uh, you know, what was yeah, it called? So I, what were you called? Walk in contradiction or something? Ooh, that's not bad. Uh, uh, I actually, oh shit, oh man, you're green? really testing my <laughs> my memory. I don't even know. Did we even have a name? I do know that <laughs> the one show we played was at the local rec center, and we played all these Green Day songs, and then we had a Minor Threat song that we just mm-hmm. threw in there just to throw. I don't know why we just <laughs> threw in a Minor Threat song. Uh, but yeah, so I I really think like that's that's some of the other reviews that i've gotten it, like the the dialogue is very authentic like i related to this immediately someone said like i i felt like i was at this guy's high school yeah and 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 that as like you know someone who's not i don't call myself like a writer those were all things that made me feel very proud of the 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 book because it's like wow i'm able to like if i can take someone back to like you know their high school days and it and and they say like wow man I, I it sounded like I was exactly there sitting at your lunch table with all your like skater friends then I mean I don't really think of a higher compliment than that you know yeah right on man and I I'm I'm really happy for you to be able to do this because I know in addition we we spoke about the hardships and the ups and downs of being an actor but writing in itself is very 
because you're it's you you're uh you sound like me where you're probably self-critical uh i don't know how many drafts you went through but <laughs> to, to finally put it out into the public and the world and these are my words that's a big leap to take so it's not just one book but to have three you know that's a uh, Good for you, man. Well, so I've got two. I got, I've got one more to do. I that's know. My, well, three that's is the my goal. big project. That's the yeah. Well, it has to because the second one is a to be continued. So, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but um, the one thing I did tell myself and anyone who's still listening and is not <laughs> like you know, oh my god, would this guy shut up? The one thing I did tell myself because you know, as an artist, you can tend to get into your own mind, right, and your own, and you can be your own worst enemy, right? Mm -hmm. I said to myself. I am just going to write something every day and I don't care if it's, I'm not going to get in my own way and be like, well, the grammar was incorrect or I didn't, you know, I didn't like what I wrote or, you know, this, this isn't good enough. So I'm just going to stop. I just made it a point to write every day, even if it was just to go back and reread what I wrote and maybe mm -hmm. change some things. But that's what I really found to be the most useful to not be my own worst enemy, to not get in my own way and to just, and to just write it and to just get it out there and to not be overly critical. Oh, this, this, uh, this is, you know, this is no Stephen King or anything. Well, I'm not Stephen King. I'm, you know, I, I, my writing is the way it comes out. And so if anyone out there who's maybe trying to write something or, you know, thinking about writing something, I would say the, the way to do it is to just every day, even if it's just like a sentence, just keep going every day. And, you know, two years down the road, you will be surprised as to what you have. And as far as grammar, that's why there's editors. Yeah. To, to help you with that. Because, you know, when I was starting, I didn't know the difference between T-H-E-N and T-H-A-N, right? Okay. Then and then. But now I do. Uh -huh. and I was always using the wrong T-O or T-O-O, -O, right? But now I'm better at using the correct. Oh, okay. Like, even if I didn't know, someone else does. And someone would be like, hey, Jason, <laughs> you used the wrong one on this one. Let's change it. Fine. But the idea and the story, you know, it's out there. Someone else can handle the grammar. So if that's what's holding you back, don't let it hold you back. Uh, I love that. I'll just say the thing I still struggle with is uh, affect versus effect. Oh, oh, me too. I still don't know the difference. I don't. I, I find myself Googling it every time I write a sentence that uses it. And I just end up using another word instead. You're like, uh, you know what? Screw it. Let me just use a different screw word. Screw it. <laughs> but no, it's, it's inspiring, man. And I'll tell you, because based upon what we were talking about off the air and, and to wrap up this recorded, you know, the actual podcast. So I was writing a, a Guns N' Roses book with. Okay. Uh, the uh, one of the former uh, managers of Guns N' Roses and spends almost two years on it. Uh, well, um, yeah, close to two years, 200 pages. I don't know the route that you went to, but he wanted before we were done. I'm like, we still don't have enough. We have a lot here, but we still need more. But he's like, we should be getting paid. I'm like, okay, great. Went to a literary uh, agency, that literary guy wanted no part he's like this guy is not a professional writer mm -hmm. uh whatever he would tell me the things that you're telling me so you're all you're doing is validating my thought process he's like this just sounds like conversational it's supposed to sound conversational it's this guy's biography his words where's the character building there is character building you're reading like a small portion of it mm -hmm. so it, it just got to the point where uh the xg and our manager wants to work with this guy because he just thinks you know oh i need to work with this big agency and uh, I had to make a decision like you, you can't I got to leave the project. I'm like, oh. you're, not, you're like, you're not helping me with this. Like I'm, I would be working with I have no problem working with another author. Uh, there are like you mentioned editors, you know, even though I, I mean, I have background in, in writing and things like that. So it just becomes frustrating. But I think that's what happens when you're talking about with film. Like you just never know, mm -hmm. uh, even though this guy would tell me what he thinks was wrong it was always a very generic answer mm. and not a real answer anything that i can use and i'm like doug this guy's already made up his decision already and we're just yeah. circling he just wants you to get rid of me so i'm like you know what i don't want to work with somebody who doesn't want to work with me i'm gonna and that's came uh for me quitting that project came the birth of appetite for horror huh. and i've become a lot happier less stress because of that i don't think he's done anything with that book so i would have just been wasting my time even more Mm. So 
All that being said, it doesn't matter what door you're knocking at, you know, and I've had that, those frustrations too, man. I'm sure we all have, whether mm -hmm. you're in a, the you know, public, you have a public job like you and I do, or just regular, like this isn't, this isn't happening for me. Let's try this. And even yeah. though it may not work right away or be what you wanted, you never know the doors that it's going to open. Just keep yeah. that creative, those creative juices flowing and what makes you happy flowing. So, uh, I guess with that, I, I asked you to think about something before the air because we were talking about Green Day, your favorite band. Mm -hmm. And it was cool when I initially reached out to you. You're like, oh, Appetite for Horror. Is that like Appetite for Destruction? Yes. Yes. So we were, we were talking some GNR before the air. Do you think there's a Guns N' Roses song that would make, or maybe a song, or since you're a punk rock guy, that would make for a good horror movie? Something that can really translate, you know, like lyrically, that could be like, oh, what if. Because well, what about what here. about Night Train? I, that, that could work. I don't I don't know about lyrically, but just the title, <laughs> Night Train. Like, I don't I don't know. That's what true. It's about uh, it's about a cheap wine. It, you know, but in my and oh, is it? I see. I never knew that. In my okay. mind, I see this train, this mysterious train at night. Right. Yeah. I don't know what's going on on that train. Okay. It, it, we could do that we i don't know it, it what kind of images does it evoke i see like it going through the mountains with like lightning flashing <laughs> and i don't know maybe there's like a, a murder mystery on this night train okay so you uh, know what once you're done with this trilogy <laughs> you and i will work on a horror gun a night train <laughs> no, a night train <laughs> we'll see if rl stein will help us out with yeah that. yeah i actually tagged rl stein uh he he didn't respond but uh you know, when when I got the first review about the Goosebumps for Adults, I was like, okay. oh, Mr. Stein, I'd love it if you'd read this book. Someone said it was like Goosebumps for Adults. And, you know, the language is kind of, you know, crude, crude but whatever. If you look past that, I think you'd really like the story. He, he never responded to me, but uh, well, <laughs> that's OK. You never know. You'll respond to the second one, maybe. So maybe, maybe. where can people, you know, is there a one stop? Uh, Jason y Yashinin. <laughs> I screwed it up. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, Shannon. Yeah, Shannon. Because um, when people Google you, I want them, because you're going to have to think Yakinin, because that's the way it's spelled phonetically. So I don't want them typing in Ya Shannon, like, you know, Shannon Darty. That's not how it's. So my brain just had a fuse right there. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I, um, it's available on Amazon. But um, if you go to my website, you could also order it off of my website as well. But honestly, it's probably just easier to um, probably just easier to uh, order off of Amazon. Although I um, here wait a minute because eh. you have a, a Wix website, is that? Yeah, I mean it's it's yeah it's 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 nothing like super. It's not super fancy or anything like that, but like, um, but I mean, it's not, it's the name. Isn't going to be like, you know, Jason Yashin, uh, Yashin.com. It's not that. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, um, here, wait a minute. It's, uh, J Yashanin dot Wix site. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I oh, Hey, you can come, you can come down if you want here. You want to say hi to my daughter. Yeah, absolutely. And my wife. Yeah. Hey, wait, they they want to say hi to you really fast. They, <laughs> well, I guess you never know. Brando, this. Brando wants to say hi. She's um. We have this. We got for Christmas this um stair slide. Do you know what this is? No, I, I mean it's like it's a slide that goes on your stairs. Uh oh. Okay. Here, wait a minute. Let me let me see if I can travel with you for a second. You might oh. have to take off the blurry thing. <laughs> I hey! can see. Oh wait a minute. How do I, I unblur my background? If you right click. This is this is radio at its finest. Oh, right here, click and, yeah. There we go. Hey. Oh, say hi. Say hi. You want to go down the slide? Yeah. Uh, no? Okay. Uh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like, you know, instead of cardboard boxes, it's like a plastic a piece of plastic that I like that. Know, what Isn't an it? ingenious invention, right? And it is. It is. So I'll, I'll just say, uh, Jason, yeah, Shannon, it was awesome talking with you. You're welcome back anytime as this horror podcast gets going, as I yeah. try to find, uh, you know, my, my base here. Maybe, <laughs> um, maybe now you don't have to read it, but maybe after you read it, um, and the second one's coming out, maybe we're like, maybe when the second one's been out for a little while, we can, 
we can chat um because yeah, that, yeah. that'll give you some time to read the first one and then and then you know the first one's not super long it's almost 200 pages uh the th- you know the second one will be a little longer and then the third one i'm guessing might be the longest just because you know we got to tie everything up but from what people have said that they do read it you know you get you get hooked so you read it very quickly because you know you don't want to put it down at least that's what people say maybe maybe they're just saying that i don't know but um maybe rl stein will agree if he reads it <laughs> we'll, we'll put it out like we, you said before we'll put out all the uh the feelers the good the vibes universe, the good yeah. vibes to the universe no this was awesome man because I, I again i was just looking through what my my favorite horror movies were when i was thinking about guests and i didn't i was pleasantly surprised because i don't know what you know you've been up to i'm sorry i haven't i didn't it's know what okay. you've been up to for a while but the fact that you're actively working on something really creative and cool was a pleasant surprise to get to, to find out and obviously talk to you about today. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. As far as acting projects, um, nothing right now, although I tried my damnedest, I tried the hardest I could to get into the remake of toxic Avenger and it just did not happen. Uh, you know, Lloyd and I are still close. I, I email him from time to time. And, uh, you know, he did, he did let me send in my headshot and, uh, he did pass it along to the director and, um, just, you know, nothing came of that. That was, that was like my big goal was to try uh-huh. because how cool would it have been to be like, Hey, I went from Tromaville to Hollywood. Right. Even, even if it was just like some dude who just gets stabbed or something like that, but, um, just wasn't meant to be, but I, when is that coming out, by the way? I think it's supposed to be this year. And um, I think it's going to be it's going to be pretty awesome. I mean, so you, know, you got Kevin Bacon in it. Like, you know, you I can't. Know that. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are like oh. some there's like some big deals in this thing. And wow. so I think Elijah Wood is in it. Peter oh, wow. Lidge is in it. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like okay. the real deal. So. So there'll be, maybe there'll be sequels like the other one. You know, you know, so, so so well, so my thinking was, hey, wouldn't it be great to have some, you know, because like we talked about, you know, the the fan base of Tromaville is like, I mean, they're diehard, right? I mean, they they have made Tromaville what it is. Wouldn't it be so cool to get some cameos of some of the people from those films that made Tromaville what it is into now what's going to be like the new Tromaville, but. I don't think anyone else shared my opinion. On well, that. I share that. I think that is not just because, you know, you and I are BFFs now. I think that's a really cool <laughs> thing. You know, our fans yeah. would appreciate that. It's not. I, hey, I, I tried. Like, I tried. Uh, whatever. I, I, I would say I would boycott the film, but I really want to see. No, it. no, I want to see it, too. <laughs> I want to see it, too. So, uh, hey, maybe they'll maybe they'll maybe it hasn't come out yet because they have to reshoot something. And maybe they'll be like, hey, Jason's on to something here. Oh, let's 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 give him a call. Jason yeah. Shannon. How do you spell his name again? <laughs> yeah. How do you pronounce that? <laughs> uh, uh, so. Love it. Well, this was a pleasure, man. I'm, I, I'm sure we'll, we will do this again. So awesome. uh, thanks Thank for, you for having me. Yes. And as I I'm searching for a way to wrap up my interviews, but I'm in, I think I'm going to stick with because you're also a fan of Tales from the Crypt. So until next time, boils and ghouls. Mm-hmm.